Hello and welcome everyone. So I was recently asked to maybe give a little peek at how all this stuff works. Uh, mainly the grappling and climbing system. So I think I figured that that might be a pretty good idea. So let's just start off with the the grappling since that's the well the simple the simple system in this one. So, firstly, you will notice that it's just a grapple node hooked up to a tick node with three outputs. Yeah, I used a lot. I well, I use a lot of collapsed graphs for this. So this one is actually a collapsed graph. It's an event tick hooked up to a sequence with three outputs. And that's basically it. So zero just goes into grapple. That's it. So within Grapple, it kind of looks confusing when you just look at it like this. Promise you, it isn't as confusing as it seems. It's pretty simple. So to prove that it's fairly simple, somewhat simple, I'll just show you the release. Left control, stop Grapple. That's how easy it is. Well, kind of, because this is what stops the grapple. So whenever we activate this custom event, which is stop grapple, we just want to set hooked to false and also set hook move finish to false. Now you could also just do this by doing this, but this is just a little neater. So if you don't know this technique, technique uh, what it does is just take whatever this input is and carry it on to the next one. So that works pretty. F that works pretty good. So next one, the visibility. Uh, so we just want to set the visibility of the cable, move it to zero, have a delay of, uh, well, move it to the world location zero zero zero, aka the player position. Then. There's a small delay, and we want to enable these two. Uh, now, if you only do the grapple, you don't, you actually don't need the can trace thing, because that's a part of the climbing system. But in this case, I've got it because that's, well, how the system works with. It. So, yeah. So that's the stop and the release. So here's the cooldown. It's just start cooldown. I have a delay in one second. Whenever that come, whenever, whenever that's complete, just set can aim to true, and then we print a string. All right, so that's pretty easy to understand. Now let's get into something that's that could seem a little bit harder, but it's actually pretty easy. So aim. Whenever we want to aim, we just take the right mouse button, and it just works like this. So whenever it's pressed. We'll aim whenever it's released. We want to stop aim. That's how it works. So when we aim, we want to test if we can aim and if we are wall running again. This don't need to be roll running. The, in your game, it could be any action really. So whenever you want or don't want to grapple or be able to aim, this is when you put those conditions in. So my condition is can aim and is wall running for the aiming at least. Then we set the field of view, and that's just to give a slight zoom in and basically just an indicator of when you are aiming. Uh, I'm planning on using also a crosshair, of course, so you can actually see where you are aiming. But this is a pretty good indicator. So that's basically it. Then you just set a is aiming to true. That's it. Now this on its own, well, now. This system, this right here, will actually be your aiming system. This will work just fine. I have a longer version though. Because if I go to my viewport here, you'll notice there's two cameras. So there's the follow camera here, the standard one coming with all UE Unreal Engine 4 third person characters. And then there's the aim camera, a camera I've added. Now that's because I wanted to not only have this, but whenever you're on a wall, I want the camera to go up a bit. So I just made a new camera for that. 
as moving the standard camera camera actually kind of messes up the what's it called the boom stick for the camera so this just works a lot better uh, at least in my case it might not be what you want but that's how I've made it so yeah that's what we are doing here we're just taking are we at the hook location so if we are we just want to set character movement or we want to get if we are falling because right now we're not falling but as soon as I'm here on the wall it's actually registering as if I'm falling since you are in the air so whenever you're on here I want that to happen and if we are falling then we just want to toggle the camera and it's the exact same under here there's no difference at all it's still the same brands true 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 and we toggle the same cameras in the same order and that's just because that's how toggling works you switch something on you switch the other thing off so that's the aim and the cooldown to stop and the release scrap similar stuff in this graph now this is where our tick comes in so we split that signal up into two parts now I'm gonna start with this one down here as it's a little bit simpler so we want to branch this is detaching the grapple if we are on top of it so you might notice with if I grapple down to the ground and whenever I touch it just stops grappling and that's just to ease up the movement a little bit might not be what you want but I've got that so whenever you are on a wall this won't happen though because it's checking if we are falling and if we are not falling we want to get the actor location get the hook location and then this node is just if it's in proximity or on top of each other if it is we want to stop the grapple so that's what's happening here this now we are in the air so now it won't do it now we are on the ground now it will do it so it's basic to you know, pretty it's pretty basic to understand you know so moving the cable and also the player this is where it gets a little bit more complicated so we check first are we hooked if we are we then want to check if the if we are if hook move finish is true or false now let's just take hook move finish and go with false so if we if the hook hasn't reached its location yet what we'll do then well we'll move rope this so firstly we set we take the cam uh, the cable set the visibility and it's important that it's a new visibility or else you'll just always get an invisible cable which isn't much use so let's set to true then that works just like that yeah so then we want to branch out so if the cable location and well if the cable we want to get the location of the cable and the hook location we want to get the distance of those two things so cable get world location and then take hook location minus those two then we get a vector length so with that length you want to check if it's smaller than or the same as 100 if it is we have reached the location or the hook has reached it lo its location now if it hasn't then we want to move the cable now remember this is updating every single tick so every well, second quote unquote it'll check for this so this is where we actually move it we will move it with an interp2 so cable link well cable the location of the cable is our current location the hook location wherever we hit and we want the hook to go is our target then get the world delta seconds now we could also use frames to calculate this but I would recommend not using frames because 
it will most likely not work as intended. That would result in you, whenever you have a higher frame rate, you'd get a faster grapple. That isn't what you want. Maybe it is what you want. It could be kind of interesting. But that's not what we want. What we want is to have is to have the cable move in seconds in the game so whenever you take seconds it'll move the same speed at all frame rates compared to just using frames now if you're using locked frames you could calculate it by frames but just make it easy on yourself and use seconds instead that's all I can really say about that and then we want to take the cable speed now this is set to 35 here and that's how fast the cable move if we set that to 10 it'll be a bit more apparent that the cable is actually moving since it'll take longer time to reach its, reach its location we can also set it all the way down to 1 and now it'll be really apparent that the cable is actually moving and it'll also move quite slowly <laughs> so you know And then we're hooked. So I'd recommend at least around the 25 mark. The 25 would give you a fairly slow grapple, but it feels okay to play with. So that's fine, but I, I use 35 since that's what I'm going for in my game. It should be pretty quick while also having just a bit of travel. So this feels pretty good. Alright, so that's how we set the cable location here. That's just by taking the current location, the hook location, taking delta seconds and then setting a speed. Now you can also set the speed through here but I recommend just doing it like that. That's where we want the cable to go now. And then we want to set reach location or reach location to true or false depending on whether we actually reach the location or not. So that's how we remove the rope and then we just want to set hook move finish based on whatever output we get from this. So if this is true then we have reached or the hook has reached its location and it's done moving. Now moving the player whenever hook move finished here is true we want to move the player this is kind of the same but a lot simpler because we're not doing insert stuff or playing around with with the in visibility and stuff so hook location minus actor location that's just to get the distance distance between the two so whenever uh, and then we take the delta seconds and the grapple speed times those two together and this is the speed we will be grappling at and this is the distance and you times those together this in this gives you a pretty fast grapple at start and then it'll like slow down once it's reaching its target now there's other ways of doing this you could try and add these two together possibly to avoid having a slowdown at the end but I think it works for my game it works pretty well uh, with the brakes kicking in like this and giving you a bit of extra time to aim with so yeah and then whenever we've grappled we just want to set the cable location uh, and we just do that by taking the cable get the world location that's its current target hook location well no sorry uh, cable the world location of that is the current location hook location is the target and yeah well you've basically seen this before but this time we have a grappling speed now if you alter this down to 15 you'll get a fairly slow grapple as you can see and this is more like a pulley system or something but I don't know you could use this for something probably but uh, not a grappling system, I'd imagine. So I'd recommend around at least 300. 300 should be pretty good. 
Bind is 350 to match the speed of everything else. So, yeah. You could also take a rule of thumb, because if you notice, the rope speed, or the cable speed, is 35, and then I just time that with 10 for the grapple speed. You could also try and use that. So, yeah, that's uh, it for moving the cable and the player. So, now we've gotten through all this, the easy stuff. Now we're getting into a little bit more complicated stuff. It's not as complicated as it looks though, I promise. So, whenever we fire the grapple, this is registered here by just the left mouse button on the fire grapple. So, whenever we fire the grapple, we want to check, are we aiming? And then I do all the other checks. Including wall running, hanging, climbing ledge, yeah. So when you've done all the checks you want to, you just set can aim to false. So this makes it so that whenever you've actually fired, now you can aim before you're at the end location. So then we check hook move finished. And if we are, so that's whenever the hook actually the hook actually reached its location. Then we want to branch out. Now I'm just gonna ignore this for a bit yet. So we're just gonna go down the false path. So if the if we aren't at the hook move finished location, then we'll start doing all this stuff. So firstly we'll do a line trace by channel. Now I chose the channel, a custom channel called Grapple Tracer. If you don't know how to add channels, you just go into project settings, then you go to the one called collision, then you just add it here and here, so object channels or trace channels. So trace channel, grapple tracer, that's basically all you need to know here, well of course also ignore self, but that's basically it. Then we want to actually find out where we want to trace, so follow camera, then get the world location, and that's it. That's the start. So that's the start of the line trace. So follow camera, get forward with vector, not the world location, but get the forward vector times that by five. So that's the distance we want. So that this is well not five, but times that with five thousand. So that's five thousand units in front of us. We scan, and then plus that with the world location to get the accurate rotation and stuff so and that's the end of the trace so this is basically just hitting a wall and then and then that's it then we take and branch out did we actually hit something if we didn't we just want to reset the gravel so stop aim stop gravel uh, set can aim to false no to true sorry and set can trace to true so that's if we miss, but if you actually hit, we want to set hooked to true, and then set the hook location based on our hit location. So you just do that by taking out hit, break hit result, take the location, and then make that to a into a variable called hook location. So that's where you get this variable from. from. So Next thing we do is set the actor rotation. Now this is optional. If you've got a first person game you probably won't be needing to do this. But for a third person game if you turn this way and you just grapple without this. So if we just bypass this part of the code here. You'll see if we do like this we backwards fly over there. Now you could maybe want to do that. That's not what I want to do though. So just set the actor rotation to follow cameras with world rotation and then break the rotation and only take the yaw if you haven't much if you don't know much about uh, what's it called rotations and rotators in the unreal engine just know that pitch is pitch like a plane it's uh, the rotation up up and down like this so we don't want to poke around with that because if we do you'll basically end up with very weird results. So, if 
we do like this then you'll get turned like that maybe you want that and the roll is basically just rotating around like this I don't want that either so I filtered those two from or I filtered those two and then just take only the yaw so yaw is the rotation like this and that's all we want to get us turned in the right direction so that's how we set the rotation then we set can trace to false start the cooldown uh, down here and then we set can aim to false then we will stop aim which is down here and then I also just print a string saying follow so that's just telling us that that's the follow camera we are using now the cooldown also prints a string called ready so whenever we fired it and it says ready then we are actually ready to fire again alright so that's it for actually firing because it's the same up here there's just one difference and that's this camera is the aim camera and that's because if we are here this will be fine but if you want an another camera like this then you'll want to also fire from this new camera not the other camera as that won't give you the right results so that's this is the exact same code I've literally just copy pasted it and replaced that one node the rest is the same so yeah that's uh, gonna do it for the grappling system this video turned out a bit longer than I wanted it to so next video I'm gonna go into the climbing system uh, that's a bit more complex than this system is so get ready for that but uh, yeah see you next time